Justin. I'm going to talk to you about my gasifier here. This is a FEMA style gasifier. And I built this off of uh, videos made by Joshua Burks on YouTube under gasifier. So if you're interested in building one like this, I suggest you refer to Josh's videos. Again, that's Joshua Burks. Uh, or you can just in YouTube put in gasifier and you'll see Josh's videos. He has about six or seven videos on there. And I, I saw his, I was fascinated by it, so I thought I'd take a crack at building one. And it worked just the way he said it would, and I tried to build it almost identical to his. And I'll tell you why I chose uh, Josh's videos over the others. is His gasifier burns such a clean flame, um, real blue, real clean, and I wanted that for mine. So I'll get right into a couple of things. Um, the reason I'm showing you this video and when you can just as easily watch Josh's is cover a couple of things uh, that Josh didn't cover. Uh, but I'll go over the gas fire itself real quick. This is simply a handle, has three chambers. My first chamber is my reactor. It's a four inch pipe, 16 inches long. Uh, it's a plate welded onto it inside a container. And as in Josh's videos, he'll explain the container size doesn't matter if it's round or square. I, I, I scavenged some parts, so all three of mine are compressor tanks or air tanks um, that I got off of Craigslist for about 60 bucks. Uh, the most expensive thing on this is plumbing. Um, cost, um, I probably have three, work, three weeks worth of solid work into this plus um, 500 bucks. And most of the money is in plumbing and uh, making some mistakes that I bought some stuff I ended up not needing um, and they were just wasted because I ruined them in the process. Uh, buying the sheet metal um, and everything. Uh, this reactor has two ignition sources just like in Josh's. This, since this is FEMA style, he got the plans directly from FEMA. This is the FEMA ignition source. It goes in and hangs over a shaker grate. This one is actually welded directly into the uh, combustion chamber reactor itself, which I like a lot. I've never used this one. I've never even taken the cap off of it. This one burns fine. I use this one. Um, if I did it over again, I would just make the pipe shorter. Um, pretty simple. Caps on it, make sure it's tight. Weld it up. When you weld these, and one of the things uh, I've learned, and I couldn't get mine to light at first, and I called Josh and he told me these things just hate oxygen. And so to really check my welds, and what I found was there was a couple of pinhole welds um, in this thing, and the minute I re-welded those, um, it lit right up. So I encourage you if you weld one of these, uh, weld it really good. Josh is a welder by trade. Uh, I'm not, I'm a hobbyist. Um, I have a few skills, I have a MIG welder, a plasma cutter. Um, if you look closely at these welds, you'll realize they're not that great. Uh, ignition source. Uh, this main ignition source that I use, it's an inch and a quarter pipe welded directly into my tube. At the, the tube itself, uh, this container, all, the, all that's inside here is just the tube with a metal grate. Um, looks like a strainer, stainless steel bowl with a bunch of holes drilled in it hanging from some chains I welded on the side, and you'll, Josh explains that. Um, and it's just hanging in there. That's all that's inside here. This is what goes right into it. Inside it, I put my fuel source, which would be pellets, wood chips, um, whatever it is, I just put it inside there, light it from here. And so that's my reactor, other than a clean out. I built a clean out, simply unscrew it, pop it out. That's a plumbing, four inch plumbing uh, cap. Uh, I screw it in there. Uh, I can pull it out, clean everything that's in there out of it, uh, and that's my reactor. I'm going to go around here to my cyclone filter. This was an air tank. It's called a hot dog tank. Uh, this pipe goes directly into the top of my combustion chamber, reactor, whatever you want to call it. Um, cut an oval shape here just like Josh did, and his videos show really well how that works. The, smoke or air or gas, whatever you want to call it at this stage, is cycloning through here. And you'll see in my clean out jar uh, all the tar that it collects. And this thing fills up pretty quick. Um, 
and I say pretty quick, you know, if I burn this for a solid hour, hour and a half, it'll fill this up. Um, temperature, I'm guessing, gets about 110 degrees. Uh, you can touch it. You, you don't want to hold on to it, but you can touch it without burning yourself, but you hold on to it, it gets pretty hot. On the side of this reactor here, it's my shaker grade handle. Again, if I did anything different, I'd make, make it quite a bit shorter. And with this simply shakes and agitates um, the ash that's in there so it can, the uh, bad ash or old ash can fall down to the bottom and be cleaned out and uh, new fuel can drop down so it can be lit. Plumbing, two inch exhaust pipe, just like Josh said, I went down to a local muffler shop. I paid $35 for everything and for them to bend it the way I wanted. Uh, this here, this black here is just uh, spray on rubber adhesive from a commercial I saw on TV. I thought I'd try it. Uh, this is just electrical taped and the reason is, is uh, Josh recommended a piece of rubber hose or rubber, he has a flange here. He thought it would be better to put a piece of rubber tubing or radio hose clamp just to make it easier to take off and on and it would cool the system down. What I found was mine was cooling down to dew point which was creating water and so I actually removed it put a piece of exhaust pipe on here now I just have an electrical tape just so I can change it out if I want to um, but it seems to work fine I don't get as much condensation it, it, the gas itself doesn't reach dew point and so it burns pretty good. This goes this is a pipe that goes into the bottom of my uh, filter. This is a, you can put straw in here, sawdust, Josh uses sawdust. I have a combination of things in here, uh, which is sawdust, straw, uh, and a couple of rags, and I'll show you how that works. This tube that goes in the bottom of it has a bunch of holes drilled along the bottom, just like in Josh's video, it slid all the way in there to the end. It's capped off so the gas actually comes out and filters up through the filter. And um, this was a little air tank. I just cut the top off made a flange, which is just two donuts welded in here. Um, siliconed it really well, put some latches on it. Um, and this is my filter. So when I wanna load it up or clean it out, you can see there's uh, wood chips in there now. Uh, I just latch it on and I'm good to go. This is where my plumbing goes in. Uh, I'll talk about plumbing here in a minute. Uh, this is a cam lock I bought inch and a quarter fitting coming out of here, inch and a quarter valve to my fan. Uh, one of the mistakes I made on here was Josh said it in his video and I didn't catch how important it was is whatever plumbing you use to go from here, make sure it's bigger than the diameter of the carburetor basically that you're going to try to light. I could not get my generator to start from this. I had a three quarter inch fitting on here, three quarter inch plumbing all the way to my generator and I just could not get it to fire. It would barely run and I tried a number of things. I went so far as to build a whole elaborate new filtering system, different fan. I mean, I tried so many things and it was such a simple fix. I just took this three quarter off, put an inch and a quarter on with the inch and a quarter pipe that fired right up runs perfect. So. Uh, make sure whatever you're going to run, the port on the intake um, is smaller than this. I would say inch and a quarter or two inches is what I would run uh, if I had to do it again. This inch and a quarter runs great. This fan, uh, this exhaust fan is from a heater in your house. Uh, it, it, uh, it's not your big blower motor. It's a little exhaust fan that takes the exhaust gases from your heater and blows them out your roof. I went down to a local um, heating and air place, bought the fan, it was 90 bucks. A little expensive, Josh built his. Um, his is DC, this is AC. Um, I would recommend, if you could build one, these are not designed for static pressure. So all of this pressure, that's the static pressure from this turning, this fan is not designed for that. So it has to work extra hard. So if I did it again, I would probably build me one or at least build the uh, or buy the fan itself in here, a different one that can handle static pressure. This one is a, looks like a little squirrel cage fan with uh, probably 40 or 50 blades, and they're real close together. Where if you look at Josh's, 
his is probably the same diameter, but he has about eight blades on it. And it actually turn, forces more air through it and it deals with the static pressure better. So this one, uh, if I had to do it again, since it was expensive, I made it work. I actually cut out a couple of my fan blades um, to help with the static pressure and it helped tremendously and it works great. But the top here, all I have, turn this around, is a basically a piece of rubber I bought at Lowe's. It's a, in the plumbing section, two inch, hooked to my fan, uh, to an exhaust piece of exhaust, really. And this really is mainly just to get the gases going, light it, make sure I have gas uh, before I hook it to my generator. And I say generator, I've hooked it to a wood splitter, a power washer, I've hooked it to a number of things, they all run fine. The plumbing itself, inch and a quarter, cam lock, uh, simply goes in here, clamps on. The other end runs to a hole I cut in my generator breather. Um, I just stick it in there, um, fireman generator up, runs fine. One of the things about the generator, uh, you don't really need to make a modification. And in, in Josh's video, it tells you, you just plug it directly into your filter. I mean, your breather in your generator or wood chip or whatever you're running. One of the things I found out is I have a very new generator and it has a weird plate in front of the carburetor. So I actually had to remove that plate, remove the filter um, to get it to work right. Actually silicone some gaps, make sure it was airtight. Um, then it works great. But there's no other modification that I have seen on any of the equipment that I run other than just making sure it has you know easy airflow so the gases can get to it. Another thing, when you go to light your generator for the first time, and I'll show you this in the next video, I'll start this up and, and uh, run a generator or something on it for you, is I, as soon as the smoke started coming out here, I thought it was gas, I thought it should light, and it takes a while. Uh, the gas will actually change um, in color. It, mine was brown at first coming out, and after about 15 or 20 minutes, it looks like fog. It's real white, real clean, and then when you light it up, it, it burns great. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me, and I'll try to answer any questions. I would say, and I'm always going to refer you back to Joshua Burks's gasifier video, uh, simply because everything I know about this and everything I learned and how to build this, I took directly off of his videos. They were very informative. He made everything crystal clear, um, and it was great. Uh, he didn't address cost. Um, because I was wondering how much this is going to end up costing. Most of it's in the fittings, the plumbing. Uh, just the valve. I mean, this one inch and a quarter valve is like 40 bucks. Um, so you can see where the price adds up. These little fittings, you know, you add $5, $5, $8. I mean, you add these little things up and it just, all of a sudden you spend some money. A lot of this, you could probably scavenge around, you know, a uh, salvage yard or something and get. Um, might not cost you anything, really. So I hope this video helps you out. Josh, thanks a lot for all your help. Thanks for calling me when you did. Uh, it really made a difference. And uh, Gas Fire works great.